Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to be virtually with you for this event. The past year has had a major impact on our democratic societies. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the key role of journalists and media to provide us with information. But it has also exacerbated weaknesses. Even before the pandemic struck, there were many varying signs. The assassination of two journalists in 2017 and 2018, Daphne Caruana Galizia in Malta and Jan Kuciak in Slovakia, who were both investigating high-level corruption in their countries, shocked us profoundly. Journalists and other stakeholders in the media warned us of economic difficulties wiping out entire outlets and newsrooms. One of the first things that this Commission did upon taking office in 2019 was making media freedom a key pillar of our thinking on the rule of law. This was then expressed in our first rule of law report covering all 27 EU countries. We published the report in September 2020 following a wide public consultation and stakeholder meetings. In the media section of the Rule of Law report, we have focused on five key areas with a link to EU law or EU values, namely the independence of media regulators, the transparency of media ownership, state advertising, the access to information, and the framework for the protection of journalists. We have started working on the second report, planned for adoption in July this year, which will look closely at developments, advances, backsliding and stagnation since the publication of our first report. Additionally, in December 2020, for the first time ever, we presented a comprehensive approach for the media. With the European Democracy Action Plan, we put the media where they should be, at the core of democracy. Let me highlight two initiatives in particular that we will present this year. A recommendation to Member States to improve the safety of journalists and an initiative on tackling abusive litigation, the so-called slap cases, strategic lawsuits against public participation. Very often, threats and groundless lawsuits are used to silence free media. We will also take action to increase the transparency of media ownership and of political advertising. With the Media and Audiovisual Action Plan, which we also adopted in December, we help the media recover economically from the crisis, adapt to the digital transformation and develop new business models. We will have more funding available for projects dedicated to media pluralism and media freedom. And I am proud that the Commission has been an important player in the foundation of the European Centre for Press and Media Freedom and in the funding of the Media Freedom Rapid Response Mechanism. This mechanism has played a crucial role in protecting journalists, in monitoring and documenting violations of media freedom, and in advocacy and awareness raising. I am aware that in 2020, 378 alerts from 29 countries were uploaded on the Mapping Media Freedom platform. I have very often used reports data and examples taken from this platform. And I am also fully aware of the support, moral and practical, which your network and dedicated staff have provided to journalists and their families in difficult situations. So I would like to thank all those involved in this very important work. This is European Solidarity in Action and I am committed to continuing working closely with you. I wish you very fruitful exchanges. Thank you.